Hi, thank you for being here today with us with Arizona Metro News. My name is Corrine Zalot, and I am the host for today's show. We are gonna be talking with Penny Whitbrot, a registered nurse who has recently recovered from COVID-19. She's going to be sharing her medical expertise around COVID. And uh, please do keep in mind that this is not meant to be medical advice. This is uh, something you always wanna consult your primary care physician if you um, are having signs or symptoms of COVID-19. So without further ado, let's welcome Penny Whitbrot, registered nurse to the show. Hi, Penny. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, so I wanna start out, you're a registered nurse. And, um, and you had COVID-19. Okay. So um, first of all, um, how long have you been a nurse? I graduated from nursing school in 2002. Okay. And um, what field of nursing have you been working in since then? Um, mostly I've done critical care nursing, um, the open heart unit, um, just various critical care positions. I've done a little bit of home health nursing. Um, some community volunteer nursing. And then I've also, I took a break from nursing for a while and did some teaching at the technical college level. So I taught um, microbiology, or not microbiology, pathophysiology, um, medical terminology, dosage, and pharmacology. Perfect. Okay. So you and I'm retired now. And you're retired now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, but you, I mean, obviously with your um, background, you have a pretty good grasp of what's going on with COVID-19. And then you had your own personal experience with that. So that really gave you a different level of insight and understanding the process and what, what it actually does to the body. That's, right? that's for sure. I mean, just, you know, you know, all these things in your head as a nurse and um, I, you know, I've had some medical things, so I kind of knew what being really sick respiratory wise would feel like, but this was, this was definitely different than any flu or anything like that I'd had. Right. And, and real life experience is always more um, insightful than a textbook. But yeah. so what were the, um, what were the early signs and symptoms that you started having with COVID-19 and did you recognize no. it right away? I didn't. So initially um, I had been watching my God, my goddaughter and she's just little and I'd had her for a couple of nights and I was tired, but I just assumed that's why I was tired because she had been up during the night. And on March 12th, it was our, um, my husband, it's our, it was our anniversary. And I was just crazy tired. The baby had gone home and I, I laid down on the couch and within a couple of hours, my husband woke me up and said, you're burning up. You need to take your temperature. Something's wrong. And that was when I knew, but the two days leading up to it where I was very tired, I had no idea. Okay. And then, um, so you started having those symptoms, then when did you end up going and getting tested or were tests available? Cause a lot of tests haven't been available. So in March there was no testing. So I had called our, um, in Kentucky, our governor had put up a COVID-19 hotline and it was, it was doing double duty as poison control. So when you called, they would say poison control and, and I hung up initially because I thought I'd called the wrong number. So I called back and that was the COVID-19 hotline. And I explained to them, um, I explained to them what my symptoms were, uh, you know, high fever. I think I called the next day. I had high fever, cough by that day um, and just was feeling kind of fluey, you know, like my whole body was hurting. And I asked if I could have a test. I told them I had significant respiratory history and they said no if I hadn't traveled out of the country or been exposed to a known, or they said, have you been exposed to a known case? And I said, well, I don't know. I don't know who the cases are. And they said, well, then you can't, you can't have a test. And um, I explained again that I was at risk for critical COVID infection. And they told me they were sorry and I couldn't have one. And I called back subsequently one time and to the emergency room um, over that three day period and was denied testing every time. That blows my mind. That blows my mind. Do you have any idea where you might have picked it up from? No, that's a common question, though. I hear that from people. And um, it's interesting because I'll get different things. People will message me and they'll say, oh, I was at the grocery store and there was this Chinese guy in front of me and he coughed and that's where I got COVID. And I'm like, no, 
nobody really knows. Even if you're a nurse working in the ER, yes, you know, you have high risk for exposure there, but you don't know for sure that's where you picked it up. You could have gotten it at the grocery store or from your kid or we just assume where we get it. Right. Well, once it's kind of gone into community spread, it's pretty hard right. to, you know, narrow down. That's why I'm wondering about the contact tracing yeah. and how effective that's going to be. Exactly. Um, so I noticed that you had some pictures um, that you had posted on your social media that were showing the red rash, the red eyes. Um, at what point, um, those are great pictures right there. So then at what point did you start to kind of piece together that, wow, this is likely that it's COVID and, you know, since you couldn't get testing, I mean, how did, how did things progress for you? Well, I mean, initially in those first days, so I got sick on a Wednesday, I think by Friday I had called my doctor and I told him I thought I had COVID. I was significantly short of breath at rest. Even sitting in bed, I was short of breath. Um, and, I, and I had developed these sorts of just, they weren't that red, but um, just some redness around my eyes, not the sclera, not the white part of the eye, but around the eye. And um, he said, you know, just in case there's, you know, there's pneumonia and stuff going around. So let's put you on antibiotics and see if you get better. And so I took those for um, three days. Initially, I felt I did feel better, but then my eyes got really red and somebody I was posting on Facebook every day because I was so short of breath, I couldn't talk on the phone. And so I thought, well, I'll just post on Facebook once a day and then people can kind of keep up with me and I won't get so many phone calls. And by the time that rash was as pronounced in the, as it was in the picture you just showed, by then I knew for sure that there was no question. It was COVID. Somebody had sent me an article out of Washington that these patients in this nursing home that had all died had these red eyes, red around the eyes. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I called my doctor and said, okay, this is, this is COVID. I don't know what to do. We can't get tested. Okay. And then I, I know from following you on the social media that you started to decline. You started to have um, septic shock sim um, symptoms and um, kidney issues, it sounded mm -hmm. like. Uh, yeah, that was down the road a little bit, but yeah. Okay. How long down the road did you start having sort of the multi-organ system failure or um, issues? I, I want to say, you know, 10 days in, I started my blood pressures were not stable anymore. Um, you know, they were either really high or very low. Um, I definitely was not peeing as much and that's, you know, kind of a big warning sign. And I had um, this fever that I could not break and it was, it ran 104.9 for three days, no matter what I took. And my doctor kept saying, you need to take Tylenol around the clock. And, and I did, but it didn't help, which is kind of a bad idea because it's hard on your liver and there's other things that Tylenol affects that doctors don't always think of. And so, yeah, the kidney and the, the liver stuff, that was definitely down the road. Okay. So um, did you know just because of how you were feeling or were you doing, because I saw something about high protein and bilirubin levels, were you actually going in and getting lab work done to find that out or were you testing at home with urine strips? And yeah. okay. So I was testing at home. Um, I, I had asked for labs. I wanted to go and have labs done and they said no. And I said, well, what about sending somebody out to the house, home health? I, I could definitely use home health. And so they called four, my doctor's office called four home health agencies and I was refused care by all four because I had COVID-19 and they said that they either didn't have enough PPE or they just didn't want that risk. And um, that was shocking to me because I had done home health and we take care of people who have all kinds of infectious um, diseases that can be transmissible and it's just never been a reason to deny a patient. But with COVID, it was kind of new and um, so I couldn't get that. We had called to see if I could get, they have a, um, a service where they can do a, an x-ray in someone's home. And we couldn't get that either because of COVID. So pretty much what I was told was, you know, unless you're going to go to the emergency room, you're not going to get care. And I had already decided that I didn't want to be intubated just with the statistics on intubation. And, um, and I had had a history of being intubated and had been told I wouldn't survive it again. So I had already written up a, a do not intubate order. Good. 
Yeah. You know, that a lot of people wouldn't know to do that. But I mean, luckily, with your nursing knowledge, you knew and you had been yeah. following it. So you knew. So what was the treatment protocol that you ended up using? And that was, you know, that worked for you? So I started doing when when my friend sent me that article from what from Washington about the nurses, nursing homes, I thought, oh, geez, I'm going to die from this. And it, and I was already just so sick. And uh, I, I so I had done some research and was looking around at other countries because there just wasn't a whole lot of great research being done here. And I saw in China where they had had some good success with hydroxychloroquine um, and azithromycin, and I didn't know about the zinc yet. And so I called my doctor and I, and I've even got a pre-existing heart condition. I have, um, I have, uh, it's called sick sinus syndrome. And because of that, I have a pacemaker. And so I was, I didn't know if they would let me have treatment, but I called the doctor and I told him what was going on. And I said, you know, I'm really, I'm really scared. I'm going to die from this with my history. I'm definitely somebody that would. And I had taken hydroxychloroquine in the past for two years for rheumatoid arthritis and it went into remission and I went off it and I did very well on it. And so he said, you know, since you've taken it in the past, um, I'm, I'm comfortable with this, let's do it. And so I pulled a protocol from China and um, we, I started the hydroxychloroquine azithromycin on, I think the March 22nd. Okay, wonderful. All right. Well, um, I think what we're going to do is continue on in uh, part two of our series, um, talking with you about all of this. And we'll get definitely more into the um, hydroxychloroquine protocol, because um, that's obviously a very hot topic and very controversial. So um, thank you so much for being here on the show. And uh, again, we'll continue our conversation in part two. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, this is Arizona Metro News. Uh, we are with Penny War Wardbrot, registered nurse, uh, talking about her experience with COVID-19. Thank you again.